We begin today with more news on the legal battle between the Live Golf Series and the PGA Tour. Today, the tour responded to Taylor Gooch, Hudson Swafford, and Matt Jones, who are seeking to circumvent their suspensions for playing the Saudi-backed Live Golf events and participate in the upcoming FedEx Cup playoffs. The response to last week's antitrust lawsuit was filed in U.S. District Court for California's Northern District today with a hearing for the temporary restraining order scheduled for tomorrow in San Jose, California at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. PJ Tour's response to the temporary restraining order plaintiffs highlighted right here, despite knowing full well that they would breach tour regulations and be suspended for doing so, plaintiffs have joined competing golf league Live Golf, which has paid them tens and hundreds of millions of dollars in guaranteed money supplied by Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund to procure their breaches. The TRO plaintiffs have waited nearly two months to seek relief from the court fabricating an emergency they now maintain requires immediate action. Damon Hack alongside Eamon Lynch of Golf Week magazine on this Monday. Your reaction as we begin to see the start of the tour's adjudication, how they expect and hope this case will be fought. It's, the PGA Tour has always had a reputation, probably well-earned, Damon, of treating its members somewhat with kid gloves. Now we're seeing how zealously the tour is going to defend its members against members who are not in good standing and who are acting essentially as frontmen for the Live Golf in this litigation. And I, I, it's quite strident, the language the tour uses in its reply here, that they're essentially accusing the plaintiffs, in this case, Gooch, Swafford and Jones, of concocting this tapestry of misrepresentations, of, of hearsay, and in some cases of outright lies, and arguing that there's nothing arbitrary or capricious about their suspensions, that these players were informed that if they were to go down this road that there would be suspensions, that they were then duly suspended. They are now claiming that they are harmed by these suspensions. The tour is arguing that any harm is self-induced in this case and simply that these three players are seeking judicial permission to continue breaking the regulations that they've been breaking. And the tour basically saying these live golfers are fabricating an emergency despite knowing the tour regulations and breaching those regulations. After looking at what the tour has filed this morning in Northern California, do you sense that either side has an upper hand here? I don't think they have an upper hand in the broader issue. And I'm not even sure how much the temporary restraining order case will ultimately be reflective mm. on anything. It's a smaller battle in what will ultimately be the bigger antitrust war. And traditionally, the courts have tended to allow athletes to continue competing while broader issues are litigated. And that would be an expectation a lot of people would happen, would come tomorrow. But the tour makes a fairly robust case here on, as to why that should not happen, that this is self-induced harm, whatever harm exists, and that the, the crisis is manufactured at a late stage because these guys were all, all three of them were suspended June 9th when they put a tee in the ground in the United Kingdom and they've waited until this point in August, a few days before the, the event begins, to try to manufacture the idea that they need emergency relief, that in fact they don't need, according to the PGA Tour. Uh, the, the bigger fight still ha has years to rumble in the antitrust case. I don't think that either side would claim it as a victory. Sure. If, if the Tour oh, yeah. comes out on top tomorrow, and certainly Liv will if it does, but it's a smaller battle within a much larger war. That hearing, 4 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. The FedEx Cup playoffs scheduled to begin on Thursday in Memphis, Tennessee. How dangerous of a week is this for professional golf, considering this is one of the big moments in a PGA Tour schedule, the FedEx Cup playoffs beginning the same week that there is a hearing in this antitrust lawsuit, this TRO, against three former members of the PGA Tour trying to fight their way back into said FedEx Cup playoffs. How precarious of a week is this for pro golf with fans that will surely be turned off by this type of off-the-course situation? It's a precarious week, and certainly for even 125 guys who are in the field legitimately in Memphis who don't want the distraction of another three being added and then constantly being asked questions about it. In fact, they're going to face the questions yeah. even if those three guys aren't in the field. But it, it is an important week because if a precedent is set here, if this restraining order is granted, well then any live player who is eligible 
in some form for any PGA Tour event going forward could presumably then seek the same injunctive relief to show up and play. And it would be a recurring thing where, as Live Golf needs it, it, it needs to be... It needs a host body. It right. needs the PGA Tour to make it successful, to keep its guys relevant and in the public eye. So one would expect the further waves of live golfers will seek restraining orders to access the field going forward. And if that precedent is set tomorrow, does it make a lot of sense for the PGA Tour to then continue to fight those in injunction requests when the relief has actually been set as a precedent and then that just creates mm. a situation where you're going to have live golf guys playing PGA Tour events essentially for whatever period of time it takes until the, the broader antitrust case is adjudicated and or their status as independent contractors is adjudicated. And that TRO hearing, temporary restraining order hearing is tomorrow 4 p.m. Eastern out in southern or northern California I should say. Let's take a closer look at some of the highlights of this response that was filed by the PGA Tour this morning. This was the eighth point in the response from the PGA Tour saying this is what the TRO plaintiffs are claiming that their suspension served as a warning shot to other professional golfers and has the effect and the intent of threatening Live Golf's nascent entry. The PGA Tour is saying, in fact, Live Commissioner Greg Norman has told the media the longer the PGA Tour suspends players, the less Live Golf is worried about it because we have more people coming in and wanting to invest. And this is point number 10. This is the response to the PGA Tour after the TRO plaintiffs contend in identical language in each of their declarations that their decision to join Live Golf was made in part because they believe Live Golf is good for the game, that Live Golf offers innovation to the golf entertainment product. PJ Tour responding, the TRO plaintiffs have made very different public statements about their reasons for joining Live Golf. Matt Jones told the Golf Channel that joining Live Golf was purely a business decision for me. And this Hudson Swafford, this is the response again from the PJ Tour. Hudson Swafford emphasized to Sports Illustrated that Live's schedule is very enticing to a guy who has two small kids. Mr. Taylor Gooch told the media he intended to play just one live event before returning to play on the PGA Tour, despite the fact that he intended to actually play in more than one event. And this case will be heard by District Judge Beth Labson Freeman of the Northern District of California. She was nominated by President Barack Obama in January 2014, confirmed by the Senate a month later. And her previous roles has included Deputy County Counsel in San Mateo County in California for 18 years, and then a judge in the Superior Court of California in the County of San Mateo for 13 years. And here's the timeline of recent events that has gotten us to this point. May 31st, Live Golf Field for London was announced, and that included the three plaintiffs, Taylor Gooch, Matt Jones, and Hudson Swafford. Nine days later, they put a tee in the ground in that event, and on the same day, the PGA Tour suspended all of its members who were competing in that Live Golf event. Then last Wednesday, 11 Live Allied players filed an antitrust suit against the PGA Tour, and in a secondary legal action, Gooch, Jones and Swafford sought temporary restraining orders to play in the FedEx Cup playoffs. Today, the PGA Tour has responded to that action, and tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, the Judge Freeman will hear that case in California's Northern District Court. We bring in now Jaime Diaz. Jaime, you've read these documents today as well. What do you take away from reading the tour's response to the request for the temporary restraining order? Well, you know, Eamon, you know, there's always recency bias in whenever you see a, a very well put together uh, statement by either side. And right now the tour, I think, has, you know, an impact with how well organized and how it's point by point answered things. And it just seems to me that it makes a pretty strong case in rebutting lives at objections. I mean, certainly it comes down to this one, you know, very basic uh, offense by the live golfers, which is they did not seek uh, a release to play in a competing event, which is PGA Tour policy. They played in the live event. They were told they were going to be suspended. It happened. They did not file anything until right now. And now they're saying it's an emergency and that there's irreparable harm. And irreparable harm seems like a very high bar for guys who've just signed for millions and millions of dollars. Um, and, you know, the emergency part of it seems a little fabricated, too. I mean, I just go back to the big picture, which is basically the tour has worked 
for a lot of years, certainly with some objections and some arguments, but overall relatively few. And most recently, the tour has been praised by most of the players for being in this kind of Camelot moment after Tiger Woods when all the prices of all the uh, purses have gone up, the pensions better than ever. Just we just had a new disruption by uh, by, by by Saudi by the Live Golf money which is extraordinary, and it's changed people's perceptions about what they possibly can get out of golf. But before this, there were no arguments about the tour. To act as if now there's been all this dissension and this is a very flawed model, perhaps there will be flaws that are found legally. But at the moment, I just think like the majority of people would say, what's the problem except you want more money? Uh, and that's fine, but is there really a legal offense? Uh, to me, the TRO could, could go in, in Liv's favor, and if it does, it's a fairly narrow victory, and it'll be played up in terms of uh, you know public relations and everything. But it doesn't really go to the antitrust suit uh, as a whole, in my opinion. Uh, that's a bigger fight, as you just said, Eamon. This one will be you know chalked up as a small victory, and if they happen to get it, and if they don't get it, the tour will do the same thing. But I don't think a great deal is at stake right now, except public opinion for the short term. Yeah, Jaime, in the same token, we heard players in Greensboro last week, PGA Tour players saying that should live golfers show up in Memphis, Tennessee, that they would not be welcomed by the membership. How dangerous a week is this for professional golf on the whole? Well, that perception is dangerous, Damon, that the, the golfers who have always been the genteel athletes, the ones who, you know, rooted for each other and called penalties on themselves, if they're suddenly fighting openly, uh, I don't mean fist fighting, it, it could come to that, but let's just say there's just a lot of arguments and cold shoulders, I think that hurts the sport and the sport's brand. So I don't think anybody on the PGA Tour wants to see that, but after all, this is a lawsuit against the players. This is their money that's going to pay for those attorneys. And so, of course, there's hard feelings, especially if they feel this is a specious lawsuit. So it's unavoidable, and it's right now just a down period for golf in terms of how it's being perceived by the public. Uh, some people are PGA Tour pro. Some people are, are pro-live. But the fight itself is not good. Uh, let's hope it's not, you know, a long, long-term one, although that could be the case as well. Jaime, do you find it interesting in how much of the tour's rebuttal is using the words of Liv Golf and the players against them in a way that all of the braggadocio we've seen from Greg Norman about how, you know, he's got players lined up, that he almost has to close the gates here because so many guys want in, while on the other hand he wants to argue that irreparable harm is being caused by the league or somehow this nascent upstart is being stomped out by, by the PGA Tour and the DP World Tour. It's kind of as though they... It's interesting that Monaghan and his crew at the PGA Tour seem to have said very little in public over the last year. The guys on the other side have said quite a lot in public, and now it seems to be turned against them when the legal filings come around. It's a good tactic for the point you make, Eamon. If, if, if you're bragging then, that things are going so great and people are waiting in line to join, how are you suffering irreparable harm? Uh, it, it's a contradiction, and I think it's a, it's a good tactic. Uh, I think, you know, some people have questioned whether Jay Monahan and the PGA Tour have been vocal enough in, in these interim months. Uh, but I think they believe they have a good, strong case that will hold up in court and would rather not air it in public uh, at the perhaps, you know, detriment of that case. Because when, as soon as you start saying a lot, you can certainly help your opponent, but you can also say the wrong thing. Uh, and make a mistake. So I think they want to keep it in that vacuum of the legal issue, and I think they feel they have a, a, strong, uh, a strong case. Uh, some people feel that the TRO uh, sort of uh, barrier or, or, or bar is lower and that it's not a big deal to get a TRO. I still think if you're trying to prove irreparable harm in an emergency situation, I think that's, that's a pretty high bar considering what Liv's case is. A lot of unknowns of what could be another very contentious week in professional golf. Great having Jaime Diaz with us on this Monday. And a reminder, the hearing for the temporary restraining order is scheduled for tomorrow in San Jose, California at 4 p.m. Eastern time. We will have you covered with live reports on Golf Channel throughout the day.